another WaterTrek 360. I'm down here in Cayman Brac and I'm going to do another review on the Dive Volk Sea Touch 4 Max housing for the iPhone 13. Uh, I've had an opportunity to use it for the entire week and uh, I've changed my mind on quite a few things. So let's have a look. If you recall from previous videos on the Dive Volk, I had random issues with the touch membrane's receptiveness, along with challenges of how I had it set up on my camera rig. It didn't work when I wanted it to. I made some changes that seemed to have worked. Originally, I had the Dive Volk handheld underneath the mount of where I had the GoPro on my rig, along with a 360 camera, that's the round bubble you see there, mounted on a selfie stick that was above that. Uh, that made challenges because in order for me to use it, I couldn't get to it quickly, and that was you know, problematic. I switched it around and put the Dive Volk above the Hero, and I handheld the 360 camera on a separate mount with a tripod so that I could use that as a separate experience uh, away from the other initial setup. This allowed me to see the screen on the Dive Volk and get to the touch features quickly so I could get a shot that I wanted to more rapidly. As for the 360 camera, we'll talk about that later. One of the other things I did uh, to try to help with the touch membrane issues was to try to raise the phone up a little bit so that it pushed against the membrane and I didn't have to push as hard. I took an old screen protector for my iPhone. I cut the top, which is why you see it all shredded here a little bit, and I put it inside the sleeve when I put the phone in, just enough tolerance to raise it a little bit. It seemed to work, so I'm gonna leave it. As for settings, I use the recommended assistive touch on as well as tap to wake. Since I do video, uh, I was set at 4K 30 FPS. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. The biggest change for me though is I set live shot off. So in the camera settings, I took live off. I went to preserve settings and I put live photo on for preserve settings. This helps ensure that it works the way you want it to underwater. If you have live mode on and you inadvertently touch it, when you go to do a video, it will not respond the way you anticipate it to. Again, as I mentioned, I'm not much of a still photographer, uh, although I seem to get a lot better shots this time since I addressed the touch issue. I tried portrait, I tried standard photo, and they seem to work. You be the judge. So I took a variety of shots. This one here is just above water, below water. It might have worked a little better with one of the bubble housings to get a more rounded view, but it was fine. Now that I had seemed to have cleared up the receptiveness issue, one of the things I wanted to play with was the zoom feature. As you'll see in the next couple of clips here, I was able to zoom pretty rapidly in and out. One of the challenges there is when you do zoom in, depending on how far you go, because you can go up to uh, 15 times, that you will lose sight of what you were looking for if you're not careful. The way to do it really is to zoom in and then get your shot if you see something you want to get close to. Like these jawfish, uh, there's no way I could have gotten this shot if I tried to get closer. Jawfish just are very skitterish. Another option I played with was slow motion. I typically don't do slow motion. Maybe for a larger subject I might, but migrating between slow-mo and video and picture was easy. One of the greatest features of this is that I was able to change settings underwater. Uh, I was diving on a wreck uh, called the Tibbets, and I had forgotten that I wanted to change my video from 30 to 60 FPS. And at the beginning of the dive, I changed that underwater, which enabled me to get the video that I wanted, even though I had forgotten to do the settings up front. I am working on another video specifically about new lessons learned with the iPhone 13 Pro, but these images are with base settings. No alterations were made post-production other than cropping the duration. As you can see, the video quality is quite remarkable. This is at a depth of roughly 50 feet. I really am impressed with the iPhone 13.
One of the challenges is still the membrane protector. When the lens filter unit is on, the membrane does not sit well. So I used a rubber band to hold it anytime I was in transit. And once I got onto the boat and it was on the camera table, then you know I got it set up on my gear and I would keep the membrane face down, but it was always a concern to me. There was a lot of other cameras on the boat and you know, protecting that membrane was critical to me. I know I constantly repeat the concern about the membrane's durability and getting a perf, but real world, and I think I jinxed myself in the last video, that 360 housing that you're looking at now is fully flooded and I took a nice $500 camera and turned it into an ornament. I really like that this housing was relatively low maintenance. When you are doing three to four dives per day, say on a liveaboard or resort, the less you have to worry about, the better. I didn't need to replace or recharge batteries. I didn't have to pump or check vacuum pressure. All I had to do was make sure my phone was charged and the closure was cinched nice and tight. And the most importantly, protect the membrane from stress. I rinsed it each day for about an hour. That was it, other than to clean the lens filters. I could even recalibrate the iPhone during the dive if I had to. Simplicity made my week of diving easy. So before I give you my updated opinion, take a moment to enjoy this wonderful wreck. Well, that concludes the third round of testing with the Dive Volk C-Touch 4 Max underwater housing with my iPhone 13 Pro. I have to admit, my opinion has changed. The ease of use now that I have addressed the touch membrane sensitivity issues and can consistently get out of the housing what I want to change settings on the camera when I want, give it an A minus B plus. I mean, it really has, it's come a long way in my mind now that I made some common sense changes to using the housing. Now, I'm not saying that these are right for you. I'm just saying these are what I did to make it work for me. That said, my challenges with the membrane and its durability still apply. I took this beautiful little 360 camera and turned it into a brick because I did not spend enough time ensuring that once I put the moisturizer wafer in here that I was properly sealed and I destroyed a wonderful little camera. If that happens in this housing because of this membrane, then my phone is shot and it's way more expensive and I'm going to have a hard time getting home because uh, everything I use goes through the phone. Now. That said, I give it a thumbs up. I like the housing. I will be checking out other housings in the future, so look for those reviews as well, but I will continue to use this as I dive. Do look for other videos when I compare the iPhone 13 to the Hero using base settings. That's coming up next in the next couple of weeks, so do check that out. And as always, go explore, get wet. <laughs>